in cost benefit analysis, in principle, the benefits should be measured as consumers' maximum willingness to pay for the goods or services due to this project. And the costs, they are measured as firms or, or, or a person's minimum willingness to accept and return for pro providing a good or service. And we can illustrate, we can represent this uh, concept in a supply and demand diagram. Or we can use supply and demand diagrams to conduct welfare uh, analysis. Okay, let's say, let's say, let's look at uh, coffee. Coffee market, let's say. And as a convention, I'm putting plus on the vertical axis. Quantity, only horizontal axis. Okay, first coffee. Um, suppose consumers, or I'm willing to pay a price of this many. Then, on top of the first coffee, for the second coffee, Because I already consumed one coffee, my willingness to pay for the second coffee will be lower to this. Suppose it's this table. Similarly, for the third coffee, one more coffee on top of these two coffees, my willingness to pay for the third coffee, again, is smaller. So and so forth, so and so forth. I have all this willingness to pay for the coffees and I can link them together. This is actually demand for coffee. Demand function for coffee. Or private marginal benefit. Is margin is the is is the consumer's willingness to pay to one more cup of coffee, next cup of coffee. So, so it's a marginal benefit. And it's private because the benefit goes to the consumer themselves. So it's private marginal benefit. So that's the demand curve or private marginal benefit curve. Similarly, On the supply side, the coffee shop want to produce coffees. It, it need to pay a cost for the resources that they used in the production of coffees. So suppose for the first coffees, the extra cost or the marginal cost is this many. This many, suppose. Okay, for the second coffee, one more cup of coffee. The extra cost will increase because of low diminishing returns. Because the resources that are used in producing next cup of coffee, the productivity associated with these extra resources to produce this extra cup of coffee, the second cup of coffee, is is lower due to low diminishing return. So the extra marginal cost goes up, extra cost goes up. Similarly for the third coffee, fourth coffee, so on so forth. So I got all these points. Link all these points together. We call this supply curve. Or private marginal cost curve. So, 
is is the cost the extra cost associated with producing extra cup of coffee so that's why it's called marginal cost it is private because those are cost paid by um, producers by the supplies of the coffee by the coffee shop okay uh, so now we have uh, supply and demand let's put them together Demand, which we also call the private marginal benefit, supply, or private marginal cost. And the equilibrium, market equilibrium is at point E. Which means market equilibrium price of coffee is PO of $4.50 per cup of coffee. Equilibrium quantity is QO. Okay, um, what's the welfare, society's welfare associated with uh, this coffee market? To see the social welfare, let's, let's look, look at first cup of coffee. For the first cup, for the first cup of coffee, consumers are willing to pay this many dollar for this cup of coffee. They actually paid PO price, so they, there's there's uh these consumers um enjoys a surplus. She is willing to pay a price that's higher than the price she actually pays. So we call this consumer service. For similarly, for producers, for this, the producer of the first cup of coffee, the extra cost to the producers is this many? Is this many? And the producer, the coffee shop, is selling this cup of coffee at the price of this many. So producer also enjoy a uh, surplus. We, we call it producer surplus. Okay, for the first cup of coffee. For the second cup of coffee, the next cup of coffee, similarly, there, there's producer surplus of this many, third cup, this many, so on and so forth. And similarly for the producer, second cup of coffee, and for the consumers, second cup of coffee, uh, the consumer service, this many, third, fifth, so on and so forth. Or we can actually uh, share all the triangle area. This is called consumer service. This is producer service. So the society's welfare, or the welfare associated with this coffee market, so is equal to consumer service plus producer service. which is this, this triangle plus producer surface, which is this triangle. So consumer surface is the area below demand function or private marginal benefit function above the price, the equivalent price. And Producer surplus is the area above the supply curve below um, the equivalent price.
Okay, uh, let's do a, a calculations here, numerical calculations here. Suppose we have inverse demand function, P is equal to 10 minus Q demand, okay. And supply function, And we want to calculate our task is to calculate the consumer surplus, consumer surplus, and producer surplus. So for the demand, we can draw it. We know that. Demand function P is 10 minus Q. It's linear, it's a straight line. So, so all we need to do is have two points that can pin down the whole uh, curve. So the first point we are going to look at is uh, price is equal to price is equal to say price is equal to zero. What's the associate quantity? Quantity is equal to 10, the first point. Price is zero, quantity is 10, 10. Second point we are going to use in the drawing is quantity is equal to zero. What's the associated price? Price of the associated price will be 10. So it's 10 here. Link these two points together. We get we get um we get um the demand function, a private marginal benefit function. For supply curve, we know that P is equal to minus 1 plus Q. Again, it's a straight line. So we only need, uh, it's a linear straight line, so we only need two points to, po to pin down the line. So first one is P is equal to Zero was associated Q is equal to one. One. P is equal to no, no this one. P is equal to zero. Q is equal to one. This point. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna change just to make things easier to, for us to work. I'm gonna draw a negative one. I'm gonna use one. P is equal to zero. Q is equal to negative one. This. Okay. Secondly, uh, Q is equal to zero. P is equal to one. The second point. This point. Link all these these two points together we get the supply curve. And I'm going to ignore the negative sections. Okay, so that's the supply curve. Okay, uh, the equilibrium is point E. And we want to first calculate What's the equivalent price? What's the equivalent quantity? So at equivalent Q quantity demand will be at point E, quantity of demand will be equal to quantity supply. So QD QD from this inverse demand function we get a QD is 10 minus P. Okay, 10 minus P is equal to QS is P minus one. So this implies I move this term to this size, this term to this size. So 11, 10 plus one is equal to two P or P is equal to 5.5. .5. So equilibrium price is 5.5. .5. What 
What is the equilibrium quantity? So let's plug 5.5 into either the supply function or demand function. So Q will be 10 minus 5.5. .5. So it's equal to 4.5. .5. So this is 4.5. .5. Okay. Now we are ready to calculate the consumer surplus and the producer surplus. So we know that the consumer surplus is the this triangle and the size of this triangle will be one half times 10 minus 5.5 .5 times 4.5 is equal to 4.5 times 4.5 divided by 2. So roughly 10.125 if you use your calculators. For producer surplus, it's this triangle. And this is equal to uh, one half times the length of this side, which is 5.5 .5 minus one, right? We previous when we are drawing the supply curve, we use this point, we know this point, times 4.5. .5. So it's equal to 10.125 as well. So um, to society's welfare will be consumer surplus plus producer surplus, so which is 10.125 plus 10.125, so which is 20. 0.25. Okay. That's uh, a numerical exercise for computing the social welfare in the coffee market. Okay, let's keep moving. Suppose um, let's look at beer market. Here we have here we have supply and demand of beer as well. Supply this is um, supply which is also we call it private marginal cost. And we have demand, which is a private marginal benefit. Okay, for the first years, consumers are consumer are willing to pay for this many dollars. When it consumes, and that's the that's the marginal benefit, extra benefit for the consumers. However, however, when it consumes, there's risk that there's a risk that they will get drunk and 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 cause trouble to the society. So for the societies, the extra benefit of the first extra one unit of beers is not this many; is is lower. Say this point. So it's only this many because of uh, people get drunk get drunk and causing trouble to other people. So, so now drinking beer, consuming beer, create a kind of negative externalities to the society. Similarly, for the second beers, there's, there's a chance that uh, people get drunk and they're causing trouble to the society. So the, the marginal, margin, marginal benefit to, of second beer to the society is not as great as the marginal benefit to the consumer themselves. So suppose this many, so and so forth, 
link all these points together, we have derived a curve we call the social marginal benefit. Okay, um, that's the, that's the demand of the beer. On the supply and the production of beers, uh, well, this this suppose this suppose there's no externalities. So now private marginal cost is equal to private and social marginal cost. Okay. So let's compare with the market equivalents where supply is equal to demand. So so it's the intersection point here. So this is E. So P O Q O Oops, don't know what happened. Let me just erase this. Oops. Okay. For the socially optimal outcomes, so now here we should equate social marginal benefit equal to the social marginal cost cost, or is this intersection point F? If this call is associate price is P1 and Q1. Okay, um, so market equilibrium. So it's at point E, P or Q or socially optimal outcome. It's point F, which is P1, Q1. So compare E with F, we see that P O is bigger than P1, and Q O is bigger than Q1. So so. So the the society the the market is producing too many the 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 market outcomes in the market equilibriums that we have we are having too many beers and the price is too high compared with the socially optimal outcome and this this is because uh, beer consuming beer generate negative. Externality, externality on consumption. So there's there's negative externalities that occurs on the consumption side. Okay. Um, let's look at say iron ore. Market. So there's a demand for iron ore. Is downward sloping, and it's we also call it private marginal benefit. And and here using iron ore does not uh uh involved in the externalities. So private marginal benef benefit is equal to social marginal benefit. For the production, so there's a supply curve with, which is private marginal cost curve that produces one more units of iron ore what's the actual cost to the, society, uh, to the, to the firm themselves. However, for Say for the first unit, um, for the first unit of um, iron ore, the extra cost, the marginal cost to the firm is this many. However, because produce, producing iron ores 
in in the morning of iron ores, uh, it can negatively affect uh, the environment, generating pollutions to to the society to the environment. So the extra cost associated with th this uh, unit of iron ore is higher than is this many higher than the uh, extra cost to the firm. Similarly, for the second unit, it's also high. The margin extra cost, the marginal cost is higher, so on and so forth. Link all these points together, we arrive at what is called social marginal cost curve. So it's higher than the uh, supply curves because of produ producing iron ores generate negative externalities to the societies. Or, or, or here in the, iron ore mar in the iron ore market, there's a negative externalities on the production side. Okay, the market equilibrium is at point E. which means a price PO, QO, quantity, equilibrium QO. The socially optimal outcome should be, should equate the social marginal benefit with social marginal cost. So it's at point F, let's call this point F. That means the price is this many. So compare E with F. F is the socially optimal outcomes, E is the market equilibrium. So we see that um, PO is less than P1, QO is bigger than Q1. So the market is producing too many uh, iron ores at a lower price than this optimal price. Okay, uh, so here we use you using these supply diagrams we can actually extend to incorporate the externalities either from the consumption side or the production side that's all for uh, uh this uh week's topic <laughs>